Welcome, ladies and gentlemen. I am Lanolin, and we are back with episode 108 of my modded Minecraft Let's Play series. And in this episode, we are going to be focusing on automating something that I am so very, very tired of doing. Also, I want to check on how we're doing over here. Um, I actually have... The cart is currently being repaired. I need to take it apart so I can repair its little cutter again. Uh, this time I'm going to repair it properly, which I'll show you guys when it's time, but it's, I think it still has like 20 minutes left, so yeah. Um, also, everything in here is still hanging out, not really doing anything. I've kind of let the bees just kind of, ah, I've let the bees just kind of hang out and um, just kind of do their thing. Basically, nobody's really running at the moment, I don't think. Nope. I think, uh, hopefully with the changes that I made to NEI and all that stuff, and all the upgrades and downgrades and stuff that I made to a lot of the mods associated with Forestry, hopefully they work. But uh, I'll pick those guys back up later on in the series. Like I said, this episode, we are going to be focusing on automating something that I am just so very tired of doing myself. Yes, these guys. The crystal growth accelerators and the creation of the pure Certus Quartz crystals and the Fluix crystals and all that fun stuff. We're going to automate it. Yeah. Um, now, I looked around, and I tried to think of, like, some of my own different ways to maybe automate it. I looked at uh, other ways that people have automated it, and I've, I've, I've picked a way that I'm going to, going to do it. Um, I've, my goal was honestly trying to find a way that didn't use Steve's Factory Manager. Uh, this is a, an extremely powerful mod, and is it going to be what we're going to use to automate these. Um, so if you're not a fan of Steve's Factory Manager now, I can just tell you right now, this is what we're going to use to do this. So if you don't want to use Steve's Factory Manager, there you go. Uh, you can, I don't know, move on, fast forward, whatever. But I want to use it because I do think it's really cool. It is an extremely powerful mod that allows you to automate pretty much anything that, it, it, pretty much anything. I, I've, I don't think I've ever seen anybody say, I'm going to try and automate this with Steve's Factory Manager and go, oh, it doesn't work. Like... <laughs> It's always worked. They've always been able to automate everything. I mean, from Batania automation to applied energistics automation to blood magic automation. Like, it, it can do anything you want. You just have to know how to use it. Um, it's very similar to computer craft, except it's more visual programming rather than actually typing stuff out. You'll see. Yeah, the way that this we're going to do this is actually really simple and is uh, pretty, pretty easy to do. It doesn't require much resources or know-how or anything like uh after this episode, you guys are going to be able to do this every single time in all of your worlds, so long as you have Steve's Factory Manager. So first thing that I want to do is I actually pick this stuff up and move it. I don't want to leave it down here. I actually have a different space that I want to put it, and I'm looking for a bucket. There we go. All right, I knew I had one. I just wasn't sure where. We're also going to actually upgrade this guy, and we're going to add one more Crystal Growth Accelerator. One more. So we're going to have five rather than four. Um, what's also nice about me actually picking up and moving this stuff is I can move this stuff as well. Plus, I think I need this cable anyway. Da, da, da. All right, I think this stuff can stay here for now. Yeah, because that's powering our XP generation. Cool. So let me just go ahead and clean this up just a bit. Yeah, I better leave that just in case I fall down there. I can't get back up. All right, so let's run upstairs because I'm going to actually put this where I've put a lot of the other applied energistic stuff, or at least the automated stuff so far, down this awesome hallway, which I've done a little bit of work fancying it up. And actually, I should point out that I fancied up this hallway as well. For like, I don't know, 50 plus episodes, this hallway has just been in shambles. So I finally went ahead and just took the time, made it look all nice. And yeah, it looks all nice. Uh, so yeah, anyway, we're going to put it in this room right here. Now, this is actually only going to use two channels, which is pretty sick. Uh, now, I was actually thinking about maybe... Actually, I guess I could actually do that still. Um, since it only uses two channels, I could use I could just run it off of this, this line, this direction. I wasn't quite sure. I was actually going to run it off this and go this way, and then I could actually use that line for... Actually, you know what? I'm going to continue to do that. All right, so since I actually have some of this glass cable on me... Eh, not quite. I'm going to grab some smart cable. Like I said, it's always a good idea to have that smart cable coming out right at the beginning just to make sure that you know exactly how many channels you're dealing with so you're not trying to guess. I mean, we've got this stuff marked too, but it's still a good idea. In my opinion, at least. All right, so you're going to go to about here. And uh, we are, of course, going to color these guys, which we 
spent a nice amount of time last episode making sure that, or I guess it wasn't last episode, a couple episodes ago, making this awesome color applicator so we don't have to deal with all this BS. Yeah, you got to do the corners too. Keep that in mind. Nice. So this guy is now saying no channels as he should. So we should be able to just go ahead and continue on down the line. To about there. Oh no. <laughs> I'm out. Actually, I guess I shouldn't run this yet. So I need to make some more cables, which is fine. Uh, and then we can run this up. So give me actually a moment. I'm going to create some things. I don't think I'm creating anything that we haven't done yet. Actually, I have. I have some stuff that we can make that I, we haven't made yet. And that is actually the Steve's factory manager stuff. Now, thankfully, we actually don't need too much stuff. Steve's factory manager. There we go. So we only need this guy, the machine inventory manager, is the brains. It, you're always going to need at least one. Actually, you only need one in, uh, machine inventory manager. So let's go ahead and get that guy going. Bam. Um, we are going to need one inventory cable. But we get eight, so sweet. The inventory cable is kind of like uh, the pipage or the the cable, I mean, as it says. So it's kind of what you're going to be running all over the place. Now, it is a full block, so keep that in mind. It doesn't do any multi-part uh, multi coolness. So, yeah. Uh, we're also going to need an item valve. There we go. Ooh, I don't know if I have any hoppers on me. Nope. Or a dropper. Oh, man. Do I have any? Did I automate chests? I didn't. Oh man, I gotta make chests manually like a pleb. You know, we can just automate this real quick. Or I guess auto craft this real quick, I should say. Bam. <laughs> now, the only thing is, I've only got a couple more slots before I need to add some more interfaces and stuff, so I don't wanna go too crazy this episode with uh, setting stuff up to auto craft, because that takes a little bit of time, man. We got a lot of stuff we gotta do. A lot of things that we can automate now that we have a nice, powerful applied energistic system set up. So let me actually make, like, I don't know, a hundred chests. What? <laughs> Available to craft. Why is it going to use crate wood planks? Uh, I guess I'm really low on wood. So maybe maybe we shouldn't do a hundred chests. Maybe we should just relax and just do 20 or 30 chests. Yeah, that's, that's good. That's fine. And it's going to do it super quick, too. So we have our one hopper. Let's get one more hopper. And then it, we needed a, I think it was a dropper. Yeah. Hopper and a dropper. Let me go back to Steve's. And it was the item valve, correct? Yes, there we go. Item valve. The item valve is the really important one because it's going to allow us to do a lot of the cool stuff that we want to do. Um, now for this build, now normally this would be it. You'd be good to go with just these three things. You only need one item valve one machine inventory manager, and one inventory cable from Steve's factory manager. There's still a couple more things that we need, but as far as Steve's factory manager is concerned, these are the only three items that you need. Now what I'm going to do is make this a little bit different, make it kind of cool and nifty, so I'm also going to grab a cable cluster. And uh, what's the last one I need? I think it's called camouflage. Cable camouflage, there we go, nice. Cool. So this might seem familiar to some of you guys. Like I said, I looked around all over YouTube, tried to find a, like a nice one that I could explain really well that worked the way I wanted to. I also tried to come up with some stuff on my own, but I, I really honestly couldn't think of anything. But this is one that a lot of people use uh, that comes out to be really nice. And the, uh, the camouflage idea I got from uh, old Direwolf20 himself, I thought it looked pretty nifty. Uh, so we're going to take that idea and run with it and see what we can do. So we have our cable cluster, our cable camouflage, our item valve, machine inventory manager, and some inventory cable. Perfect. What I'm going to go ahead and do right now is actually combine the item valve, cable camouflage, and cable cluster to make one block. So this, is all, this cable cluster is also an item valve and the camouflage. This is going to prevent us a lot of uh, butt hurt in the future. <laughs> go ahead and doing this now. Uh, what else do we need? We also need ourselves a chest. One more chest, an external chest. I actually want to make one more crystal growth accelerator, which I don't think I'm going to have too much of this stuff on hand. Although I'm surprised I don't have any quartz glass. Ugh, I can't wait till I automate the machines, man. How are you going to tell me I don't have any quartz dust? All right. 
me run down here and get these guys chopped up. I can probably use the uh, fused quartz from Ender.io to do this. So I'm just going to go ahead and use that while those guys do their thing. I thought I was totally prepared. I guess I didn't uh, account for that stuff. No worries. No worries. We should have some flux crystals, thankfully, so I can just do this. Oh, wait, I got to use nine, don't I? Wait, what? Oh, there we go. There we go. All right, so as we were, I wanted one more crystal growth accelerator, which should be that. Oh, it does have to be that. All right, no worries. No worries. This stuff should be just about ready. Now, like I said, this is only going to use two channels. So if you're uh, playing along and you happen to have your own AE system network set up, um, in any other situation, I honestly would probably just put this down here with the rest of these machines. But I kind of wanted to give it its own little its own little room. And uh, it's also going to, that line is also going to be used for more stuff. So I figured why not. Gives me an excuse to give it its own little room, build some cool stuff up. Yeah. So quartz. Glass. I don't know, give me like just a few. I don't have too much of this dust on hand, so. Grab the wrong stuff. There we go. Nice. One more crystal growth accelerator. This is, of course, going to allow the uh, the pure stuff to grow just that much faster. All right. So let me think. I also need an interface. Oh. An interface, which I have one of. Let me double check my notes. Make sure I got everything. So we have our interface. We have our crystal growth accelerator chest, inventory cable, inventory manager, an item valve that's been combined into a cable cluster. And uh, there's one more thing we need, but I'm going to wait on those for a moment because we don't super duper need them at the, like right now. So now let, them, let me go ahead and uh, create some glass cables, get everything together, make sure we're perfect and ready to go. We've already seen the cables a bunch of times, but they're probably going to take a hot second since I'm so low on dust. So let me take care of that. I will come right back and we can get started. All right, so what I'm going to go ahead and do now that we have all of our stuff in order is run this cable right down here. I'm going to run it a little bit past because, uh, again, I, I wanted to make sure that this line is going to be used for future things. Although it might be reworked just a little bit how it plugs in uh, to this little network, but we'll see. We'll see. That is a future a future issue that we will deal with when the future gets here. So that's right about center. I actually want to go back just one more. So we're right here. Right there, maybe. We'll see. Uh, I want to make it kind of similar to the uh, the room behind me, to the other room that we did. But I need it to be a little bit deeper as this build is kind of, uh, kind of wide. <laughs> also the magnet thing. I want to kind of not need to deal with the freaking magnet constantly sucking everything up. I love the magnet, but it can be a little bit of a nuisance sometimes, so... Is that... You know what, I could probably bounce that back just a little bit more. Ah! Alright, let's get up here. There we go. Gimme, 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 thank you. I hope I have enough cable. <laughs> Didn't really consider that. That I was going to be like going this far back. Also, I'm I'm sure you've noticed that uh, we're actually right above <laughs> the old room. Isn't that awesome? I'm basically putting it just above where it was. It just it's it's much closer this way. Plus it allows me to kind of re rebuild it in a way that I like. All right, so enough wasting time. Let's get on with this. So, once we have our cable run, which I guess I need just a little bit more. Let's run these guys down here. Oh, and by the way, I actually miscalculated. In my, in my test world, I realized I actually have something connected to the line that this system is connected to. So it actually only uses one channel, which is even better. Hooray! All right, so first things first. Let us get down the important bits. And I think that's going to probably be these guys. So let's get this just the four of these down for now. And we can rotate how we need to rotate these guys in a minute. Let's pick this guy back up. And actually, you know what I want to do? Do I have any? Yes, I got some cobblestone on me. Nice. 
So, of course, these four crystal growth accelerators need to be rotated just a little bit. Let's get you facing the correct direction, or are you just going to be a pain? You're going to be a pain. Of course. So remember, these, these open spots are where it plugs in and are not where you want it. You want to make sure that these guys are kind of uh, in a position that you can plug them in. <laughs> Great sentence there, Landolin. Great sentence. Actually, that works. There we go. Basically, just like that. That way it makes it nice and easy to ensure that they all have power, which I'm going to do by doing this right there. Now, they don't have power yet, but once we have this guy plugged in, this guy's going to be the main one that everything's kind of focused on. Everything kind of plugs into, if you will. So because of that, what we're going to do is take this machine inventory manager and put it right on top like that. Nice. And then I'm actually going to break this out. We're going to take an inventory cable and put it behind it like that. And the inventory cable is going to be touching or connected to this chest, uh, which I need to do that. Um, I don't need to do that just for me personally. I need to break that out. So if you're building something, you can obviously cover the chest up if you want to. I'm pretty sure you can cover up the chest. I don't know if that'll interfere with anything. Uh, but anyway, now we're going to take the interface, put them right there. Nice. Actually, actually, let me... I think I actually want you right there, and you right there. There we go. Much, much better. That way, everything gets power. The other way around, not everything was getting power. All right, so that's the basic setup. And then from here, what we're going to do is place where we at? our cable cluster. Now, the cable cluster is going to be what covers it up, because this is also the item valve. Uh, the cable cluster is doubling as the item valve and the camouflage. That way, we can see what we're working on. And we can still cover it up and not worry about getting too close and picking it up. But uh, we're going to mess with this guy in just a moment. What we're going to do is take our bucket of water and do this. And hop down here real quick. Break this guy. And I think I found it to be this. Yeah, that's the good setup. Uses the smallest amount of cable. Nice. So that way everything is powered. There's no issues as far as getting everything, the electricity it needs to run. Now everything's offline because it's not actually connected. Once we connect it up, everything will be happy. Which actually, maybe I want to run this line a little bit differently. I'm going to run out of, I'm going to run out of cable. Actually, you know what? I want to make sure it disconnects right into the interface. There we go. Perfect. That way I know that there's no issues. There may be a more efficient way to run this. And actually, I think I'm going to move this. <laughs> Just a bit. Got to save on cable, man. I only got so much. So I don't have to go and make a bunch more. Are you going to give me... Nice. So you're not going to complain about the cable being there. You'll open up. No issues. I'll go ahead and toss some uh, cobblestone down here just to keep everything nice and clean. Ah. All right, cool. So we have our five crystal growth accelerators all being powered. Device online. Yes, yes. Everyone's happy. Cool. So, uh, in this setup, these guys are probably going to continue running all the time, which is, which kind of sucks, but there's no, like, really easy way to turn them off that I could figure out. I'm not really good with Steve's factory manager, to be honest, uh, so maybe in the future I'll figure out a way to get these guys to only turn on when I need them to turn on, uh, but for now, though, they'll just, they'll just stay on, I guess. So, now that these guys are all connected and hooked up, we can cover this up. Whew. Now, here is the part, the important part. This is everything all built up. Everything should work perfectly from this point on. Although there's still a few more. Th we need to add the patterns to the ME interface. For now, we're going to set this guy up. Whew. All right. So give me a second. I'm going to come back. I'm going to set everything up, come back, and then kind of show you guys, walk you guys through it, and show you how it all works. All right. So I am back from my test world. Double check to make sure that all of my settings are correct. I've got it all loaded into my own memory so that I can uh, relay to you guys without any issues. So the first things first, to get this guy to run properly, right click the machine inventory manager. This guy right here. He's really obvious because he's a different color block than everything else. Everything else is pretty dark. This guy's got the nice red, blah, blah, blah. There we go. So it's going to bring up this interface. Now, like I said, this is kind of similar to computer uh, craft, right? Open computers, you know, stuff like that. Um, in that you're basically creating a program. But Steve's factory manager makes it very simple for those of us who maybe aren't very versed in programming to uh, be able to do some really amazing stuff 
very simply. So the first thing that we're going to want to do is actually make three triggers. So if you come over here where it says create trigger, just give it, give it the old left click just like that. You'll be able to click and drag them over just like that. Now, this little gray box is the only place where you can actually drag them around. So left clicking the darker box in here allows you to move it around. So if you're having trouble getting them, uh, <coughs> excuse me, if you're having trouble getting them to move around, that's your issue. So the next thing that we're going to do is grab two inputs right below create trigger. Right here we have create input. So we're just going to create two more just like that. We're going to put them underneath our triggers. And then we're going to create right underneath the input. We're going to create two outputs. <clears throat> I have a feeling I'm about to be attacked, but maybe not. Hold on, let me double check. All right, all right. Sorry for that, zombies. <clears throat> so yeah, so we got our two triggers, or I'm sorry, we have our three triggers, two inputs, and two outputs. So this last one, we need the. Create Camouflage Updater. Pretty sure, right? Yeah. Create Camouflage Updater. We're going to pull him over here underneath this trigger. So we're going we're gonna to hold off on these guys for now. We're going to ignore the trigger over here and the camouflage over here. That's the last. Um, now, the triggers, you don't really need to do anything. The triggers are going to want to are what's going to make sure that the uh, functions happen. So every one second, this trigger is going to trigger the input and output once we connect them. So for now, they're not connected. So for this particular purpose, you don't have to worry about the triggers. Just create them and just set them there. Easy. All right. So this is where you kind of need to pay attention. First step is go to our input, go to inventories, and select the chest because all the items are going to be coming in through the chest. All right. So we got our chest selected. Once we close that, using the little arrow over here, as you can see, we're going to switch to a target. Now, the target is uh, the direction in which the interface is going to, or I should say, uh, the target is where the Steve's Factory Manager is going to try to pull stuff out of. It doesn't matter because it's a chest. You can pull it from wherever. So we're just going to say North, activate. But it's important to make sure that this is activated, that you have it set up, or, or else it's not going to know where to pull stuff from, like what, uh, what side. So yeah, just keep that in mind. North side, just fine. Uh, items... So for the items, I think we want this to be just an open blacklist. It's just going to pull everything in the chest. Anything that shows up in the chest, it's going to grab and pull it in. So open blacklist. Now the output, where is it going to send those items? So once it picks those items up out of the chest, it's got it. It's got it in its little robot hands. It's like, I don't know what to do with these. What do I do? Well, we're going to tell them, take it and put it into the item valve. On whatever side. I usually just pick the north side. Empty blacklist. So whatever you get, just put it in the item valve. And what it's going to do, once it's in the item valve, it's going to spit the items out. The item valve will spit the items out into the water. Perfect. That's what an item valve does. It opens it up, allows the uh, you know little robot hands that are inside here, I guess, <laughs> to put them into the water. It's pretty good. All right, so this is done. We're not going to connect anything yet because we don't have anything set up. So it's just going to pull stuff. We don't want it to do that. So because I have no patterns in here, it has no idea what to pull. So it's just going to pull everything, which we do not want it to do. So now we're going to tell it what to do once it's done. So once uh, our seeds that we're going to have in our water sit there for a hot minute, you know, however long it takes now. Not too long, thankfully. A couple minutes, I think, if that. Maybe 60 seconds. Not sure. So again, we don't need to worry about the trigger. The trigger is set up perfect. One second is just fine. So now that it's sitting in the water, waiting to be pulled out, we can now select the item valve again because the item valve counts uh, the for block purposes. The item valve is the item, the, the block itself, and the area in front of the item valve, the little open spot, which is why we went underneath it so we could make sure that it's facing downwards. I guess that was a little little tidbit I forgot to mention. It's important to make sure that it's facing downwards like that. So you may, you know, it, it goes in the right direction. You don't want to just throw it up in the air. It doesn't do anything. All right. So like I said, inventories, item valve, target, north, activate. It's all good. Items. All right. So this time we actually have to put some items in here to make sure that it knows what to pull out. That way it doesn't throw the seeds in there and then immediately pull the seeds back out. So what we're going to do is type in pure. 
makes it really, really easy. We're going to hit pure surface quartz. It, it keeps it written in here, by the way. It's really nice. Pure flux crystals. I'm going to put pure nether quartz crystals on here, although I'm not going to make... Uh, I probably won't make a pattern for this yet, but it is. I am going to put it on there just so I don't have to mess with this again. Um, and then the last one, we're actually going to put the other flux crystals. These guys. They're standard ones. Boom. Because those also need to be tossed into water and made. This way I don't have to do it by hand anymore as well. So, nice. So you make sure you got this whitelist set up. Pure Sardis Quartz. Pure Flux Crystal. Pure Nether Quartz Crystal if you want to. Um, and the Flux Crystals. Again, you don't really need the Pure Nether Quartz Crystals for too much. Um, if much of anything, to be honest. So, like I said, I just put it in here just so I don't have to dump. I don't have to jump back into this uh, Factory Manager block ever again. Ever, ever again. Once it's set, it's done. So once this is done, we can close out of the input and switch to the output, which was open for some reason. Let me make sure that I didn't mess anything up. And we're good? All right, we're good. All right, so let's switch to our output. So where do we want this to go after it's all said and done? Well, the, inf the interface, of course. Uh, target, of course, doesn't matter. North, all good. Uh, then items. Empty blacklist, so you know it's everything that it, it gets it can take. Perfect. Because it's only gonna it's only gonna grab these items anyway, so we don't need to put a whitelist on the output because it's just going to output anything that it's put into it. Fantastic. Alright, so now all this is done. We're going to hold off. Again, we're gonna hold off on the trigger and the camouflage for now. So now that this is set up, I want to make sure that we have our patterns in here. So let's go run upstairs and make these patterns real quick because we haven't done this yet. I hear a spider. All right, whatever. All right, so we're going to do these patterns a little bit differently than how you would normally expect to do them. Oh my goodness. All right, let me let me, let me take care of this, this spider real quick, and I'll be right back. All right, so I am back and ready to get these patterns going. Nice long episode this time, too. <laughs> I also went ahead and decided to make another quartz seed. Like I said, I, I wasn't planning on going ahead and doing this, but in the event that we do need it, we'll be able to make it. So... Uh, if you didn't know how to make it, it's it's just like making the other uh, seeds. This requires that you grind down a nether quartz into nether quartz dust and a piece of sand gets you the nether quartz seeds. Yeah, nice and simple. So, to create these patterns, we're going to do it a little bit differently than this, you know, standard pattern or recipe type thing. We've already kind of shown this before, but as always, if we switch to our processing pattern here, which let me actually go ahead and get some blank patterns while I'm blabbing. Oh, I already have a bunch. Nice. All right, so first things first, what we're going to do is say one Sirtis Quartz Seed equals one pure Sirtis Quartz Crystal. Wow, I said that great, didn't I? One pure Sirtis Quartz Crystal. So one Sirtis Quartz Seed equals one Crystal. Boom. And we're going to do that with all of these. Wait, what? Oh, right, right, right. So, flux. Equals one. There we go. One pure. Nice. So, we have that guy. So, let's get those guys out of here. And then one nether quartz seed. Oh, I actually don't have one of these made. <laughs> Uh-oh. All right. So, maybe we'll hold off on that for now. Um, and actually, I need to make more of these. So, I'm going to wait again on the nether quartz seed. I need to grow one. I need to actually have one before I can uh, actually tell it. I don't have one right now. All right, so no worries, no worries. Uh, but the next one, and kind of an important one, is the standard flux crystal, just a regular old flux crystal, which I don't actually have any of, so I need to make some up real quick. But first thing first, uh, we're going to go ahead and dump our redstone, nether quartz, and a piece of charged certus quartz in there. And then we're going to, uh, where do I have some water? Oh, right in here. Nice. All right, so we're going to go ahead and toss those guys in there. Nice and simple, nice and quick. They should go ahead and change up real fast. And I can run up here and use these crystals I just made to complete this pattern. Uh, so one and one and one. It gave me two, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I want to make sure that it knows that it gets two for these guys. So bam. And again, we'll do the uh, nether quartz seed uh, once I make everything up. So they're not going in here. They're not going in here. No, no, no. Even though I almost put them in there. <laughs> they're going in this interface. 
let's go ahead and toss these guys in there just like that nice and simple just those three for the moment so now these guys know how to make them so what we're going to go ahead and do is come back over here and we're gonna go ahead and set this camouflage up so if we open this guy up hit blocks go to cable camouflage naturally go to camouflage set camo click this little arrow and uh, I would like to do the quite clear glass I thought it looked pretty awesome because it's quite clear so now what we can do is go ahead and hit the this little this little nub right here if you left click it you'll get this uh, little arrow or little line you can carry around and if you connect it to the top like this guy because that's his input it should work nice look at that it disappeared just like and now it also says that it's quite clear glass so you can also use this uh, this stuff to kind of make some cool sneaky bases you know that kind of thing be, might be kind of neat so anyway let's connect these guys up so let's go ahead and connect the input up like that now we can connect this output into the outputs input does that make sense Basically, that's why we put them in a line, because they're just all going to connect in a line like this. Nice. So these guys don't need to connect to anything. Remember that this trigger is going to happen whenever this guy has something over there that it, it's looking for. So if it sees any of these, if it sees a pure Sirtis Quartz Crystal, a pure Flux Crystal, etc., etc., then it'll trigger and go through its motions. So same thing with this guy. It's not going to do anything until there's stuff in this chest. So let's put stuff in that chest. We should be able to run over here and go uh, Sirtis. We need some more pure Sirtis Quartz. Actually, I think we need, we, I think we actually need some more uh, <laughs> Flux Crystals. All right, so this one's nice and simple. Let's make 10 of these. All right, nice and easy. Hit start. This will actually be super quick, so hopefully we can get down here in time. Oh! Why did it pick everything up? Huh. I'm not sure. I thought it would be a little bit safer, so let me actually take my ring of magnetization off and then put this stuff back. So it should suck everything up. Hey, why aren't you taking that? Oh, wait. Did I not put this facing the right direction? Oops. Am I a colossal dingus? Oh, I am a colossal dingus. All right, all right. So I'm a dingus. So we, if you right-click it... Oh, wow, I didn't know that. Actually, if you right-click it, you get a... Huh. <laughs> so if you left-click it, you'll uh, drop it. You'll disconnect it. So we disconnect this. It should switch back. If not, whatever. I'm just break it. All right. So apparently, I didn't quite set it facing the proper direction. Whoops. So let me pick up my water real quick. Let me hop down here real quick. I could have swore I was facing it the right way, but I, I guess I wasn't quite paying attention. No worries. So like I said, it's really important to make sure that, th that this guy is facing downwards. And uh, the the uh, output will face whatever, like it'll face the player. So it's really easy to just come down here and do that. That way the atom valve is, again, facing the correct direction. And we can do one of those. Spin him around. Maybe not. Actually, that's fine because we need to add the water anyway. No, don't push me away. There we go. All right, so hopefully now it'll work. And I actually don't think I need to re... Oh, I do need to reprogram it. All right, so this is a good example. In the event that you break something that's part of an event, what you can do... I mean, it shows you where it's messed up. It's like, oh, no inventory selected. Ah, what happened? You just go through and reselect the inventory. Item valve, please. And then this guy... Again, the item valve, please. So, with a little bit of luck, cross our fingers that this works this time. Doesn't spit it out. Nice. Okay, so it didn't spit it out, which means we can go ahead and re trigger the camouflage, reselect the cable camouflage, and it's done already. Holy cow. It's so fast. <laughs> okay. Let me run back up here. All right, let's do something that takes let's do something that takes a little bit of time. That was like instant. Oops. All right, so middle click. Um, let's not let's not go too crazy now. Let's do a thousand. I'm just kidding. <laughs> let's just let's do ten. Wait, what? You should know how to do it. What are you talking? What are you talking about? Missing Certus Quartz seeds. 
Oh, I never taught you how to actually make Certus Court Seed. You're just like, bro, I don't even know. All right, my bad, my bad. All right, so of course, we do actually need to put a couple things in there. It does actually need to know how to make Certus Court Seeds. <laughs> Whoops. I, I could have I swore I taught this thing this already, but I guess not. And while I'm at it, I might as well teach it how to make... I'm screwing up everything. This guy. Nice. All right, there we go. My bad, my bad. So yeah, that's important too. <laughs> so now we should be able to request 10 pure Sardis Quartz. Go. Run on down here. They should be sitting in there. Nice, look at that, perfect. So there are still a couple places where you can pick it up. The corners, the corners are really easy spots to pick it up. So if I was to like move over to the corner, I would pick it up. But I don't think I have to worry about my magnet. Yeah, see? It, I don't have to worry about the magnet because it's all nice and safe inside there. Again, though, I will pick it up if I move to, like, the corners over here and get real close. Then I'll suck it up. But uh, we don't. I don't plan on being in this room pretty much ever again. Um, so I can, you know, put an awesome door on here and forget about it. So I hope you guys enjoyed this episode. It's run super long, but that's, that is it. That's all you have to do. It's not too terribly bad. I hope I was able to break it down well enough for you guys to really... Uh, understand how to create this trigger. Like I said, I was trying to kind of avoid Steve's factory manager, kind of do something that was a little bit more, um, I don't know what the correct word is. I don't know, a little bit less uh, all-in-one block solution type thing, which is why I kind of stayed away from, I know that there's a mod that you can get that makes all of this extremely simple. It's just like a one block. Hey, look, it just works. Yeah, that's no fun, man. I like doing all the big automation stuff, and uh, this was kind of a cool one. So, again, thanks for watching, guys. I have been Landolin. I hope you guys enjoyed this episode. Uh, yeah, hell yeah. We spent... Oh, damn it. See what I mean? If you get too close, you can pick it up. But that's okay. You can just toss it back into the chest. It'll suck it back up. Eventually. Suck that up. Wow, this was almost done. <laughs> yeah, it'll suck it back up. And there we go. And all will be well. So, wait, did you... Oh, it probably finished. So, there you go. We run over here. This guy should say everything's done. Nice. Perfect. So again, for the hundredth time, I have been Lanolin. Hope you guys enjoyed this episode. Next episode, we are going to automate the production of processors. This one is pretty much going to take everything that we've learned up to this point, plus one more new thing that I'm going to do. And uh, it's going to be pretty amazing. So be sure to tune in next episode where we take care of that, automate some processors. So again, I've been Lanolin, and I will see you next time. Bye.